Hello, good evening to all. Myself, Dr. Nishant Nusra. I am a PG second day in PGIMS Rohtak. I am presenting the poster on evaluation of pelvic floor dysfunction in a patient with fistula in NO. Fistula in NO, basically perianal fistula. It is an abnormal tract communicating with the anal canal or rectum and perianal skin. It is a common clinical condition with a prevalence of approximately 1 per 10,000 is affect predominantly young adults male. in their four decades of life. Men are affected two or four times more commonly than women. The region thoughts to be partially higher evidence of anal gland in men. Perianal fistula may be caused by several inflammatory conditions and events including Crohn's disease, pelvic infection, tuberculosis, tuberculosis, trauma, trauma during childbirth, pelvic malignancy, and radiation therapy. However, most are idiopathic and are generally thought to be present in the chronic phase of intramuscular anal gland sepsis. The pelvic floor dysfunction is a, an umbrella term for a heterogeneous group of disorder affecting 50% of the middle age and old Paris women presenting with pelvic pain, pressure, dyspareunia, incontinence, incomplete emptying, and gross organ protrusion. Although pelvic floor disease are relatively common, their development is complex and multifactorial. The greatest risk factor for these conditions is a female sex. Other risk factors include increasing age, parity, prior pelvic surgery, and chronic increase in abdominal pressure. Fistula is a, no, is a common clinical condition with the cause significant morbidity and recurs despite surgical treatment. Moreover, patient as well as surgeon remain unaware of the associated pelvic floor dysfunction. At it, it is more common in females, which may lead to persistent post-operative symptoms in the patient. Therefore, we conducted a detailed study of the relationship between pelvic floor dysfunction and perianal disease. Imaging techniques, we use MRI because it is non-invasive modality that allow dynamic elevation of all pelvic organ in the multi-planes with high soft tissue resolution and without use of imaging radiation. We use static MR imaging in utilized to delineate components of pelvic organ support system, including the anal sphincter complex. Dynamic MR imaging with fast, fast sequence enables functions elevation to assess pelvic floor relaxation and descent. It is also the golden standard gold, gold standard modality for pre-operative evaluation and classification of perianal fistula because of its ability to directly visualize the tracts and abscess with high soft tissue resolution. The aim and objectives of the my study is to elevate anatomical and functional changes in the pelvic floor in a patient with fistula in NO or imaging. The study to re, uh, relationship between the grading of the perianal fistula with pelvic floor dysfunction. <clears throat> Uh, we use a uh, uh, patient with clinically diagnosed perianal fistula were included in the study. Patient with previously operated or partially treated patient of perianal fistula, contraindication to MRI, history of urinary infection, clinical evidence of prostatitis, clinical evidence of sexual dysfunction, or any gynecological problems were excluded. We use three Tesla imaging uh, and uh, for, uh, after placing the patient on a lateral decubitus position on a scanner table, uh, 120 to 200 cc of a warm ultrasound gel introduced into the rectum through a flexible catheter. The dynamic study was performed consisting of resting, straining, and defecation phase in addition to usual sequence of pelvis assessment. We use the parameter uh, for this uh, in uh, on the base of gems in our city hospital classification uh, we use grade zero for normal appearance grade one for simple linear interest interest fistula grade two for interest fistula with interest abscess or secondary fistula strike uh, grade three for trans fistula grade four for trans fistula with abscess or secondary track within within the ischio anal or ischio rectal fascia grade five for sup supra elevator and trans elevator disease in addition to this we following param parameters are also used like s line for that is levator hiatus m line anorectal angle levator plate organ prolapse and uh, <clears throat> the observation of my study is that uh, there is a uh, for, for grade one there is 30 percent patient for grade two there is 19 percent patient for grade three there is five percent and in grade four there is 10 percent in grade five there is uh, 36 percent patient and uh, the 
comparison of overall cases we see that hiatal enlargement seen in 35 percent pelvic floor descent seen in 30 percent abnormal anorectal angle seen in 24 percent abnormal levator plate angle seen in five percent abscess seen in seven percent number of secondary tract seen in three percent cystocele seen in two percent rectocele seen in two percent uh, we compare the fistula and pelvic floor dysfunction we see heightened enlargement, pelvic floor descent, abnormal anorectal and levator plate angle were noted more in patients with active fistula as compared to inactive fistula. Complex fistula, fistula were usually active fistula, so more cases with abnormal levator plate angle as compared to simple fistula. Percentage of patients with heightened enlargement was more in grade 1 fistula, while pelvic floor descent, abnormal levator plate and anorectal angle was more pronounced in grade 5 fistula. Uh, we see a 34 year old uh, male presented with uh, uh, perianal discharge and pain for two years. Imaging so supra levator grade 5 fifla with pelvic floor dysfunction. Uh, this is another, uh, uh, there is a figure E1, E2, E3. Uh, we see deficit pubic oxygen lines, S line and M line in the standing and defecation phase, respectively. There is a heightened enlargement and pelvic floor descent noted in defecation phase. Finding is suggestive of pelvic floor dysfunctions. And uh, this is a fig uh, figure three. In figure three, there is three images F1, F2, F3 demonstrate anorectal angle binding in resting, steering, and defecation. Four in this, in, in figure four, levator plate angle so in G1, G2, G3 imaging during resting, steering, and defecation phase, respectively. And this is another case. There is 49 years old female presented with complaint of perianal discharge and aging for eight months. Imaging revealed grade one fistula with evidence of cystocele. And this is last image. We see the 26 year old. Old female presented with complaint of perianal discharge and pain for one point five years. And imaging so grade one fistula with evidence of rectocele. Thank you, thank you very much.